Okay, everyone, we are now starting. Um, and to the guys who are watching the stream, guys, uh, for today, unfortunately, this is going to be a one-way stream, so the guys in Cape Town cannot ask questions, because um, my laptop is not set up properly for all those things. Um, but you can ask the questions um, on the YouTube comments, I think, once this thing turns into a yeah, yeah, okay, you can ask the questions, even then, I'll ask the answer them later. Stream going well, guys? Yeah. 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 And the guys who are here, well, we have the advantage of asking the questions in behalf of the guys in Cape Town. Uh, just for my show of hands, who has done any type of web scraping before? One, two, three people, okay. Again, by show of hands, how many people have done web development, as in creating HTML file? Okay, right. Okay, guys, now, when we web scraping, this is how this is how we know it works. When you want to get information from a website, um, any type of website, ideally, you're the web admin, so you have access to the back end. So, if maybe you're working at a company, you can just go in the back end, hit up a SQL, do the queries, get your results, no problem. Right? But if it's not your website, but you want information from the back end, then you have the two options. The one option is using an API. So for instance, you want maybe something from Twitter. Twitter offers you an API, which is basically um, an interface, something that says, if you want these tweets, use this thing, but you have to use it in this way for you to get whatever information that you want. Right? Uh, what's nice about APIs in terms of, in, in the side of the companies, they can actually charge for them. So they give you a taste, uh, you can get your 200 tweets, but if you want more, you need to pay. Third option, if you are broke like us, but you still need the information, <laughs> is to basically come in through the front end. And by that, uh, through the front end, uh, what, that, what that means is, you basically come in as a user. Like, everything that a user can see, and you get that information, but, with the one exception of you are not doing everything manually. You can actually get a system or you get Python to act on your behalf and just go into the website and on the front of the website just get all the information. Now the problem with that is this. If you go onto the front side of a website and you try to get any type of information, you have to have some understanding of how a website is structured. So now the basic structure of a website is just three things. It's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So now how these three things work is, HTML is the structure of the website, sort of like the scaffolding of the entire website and the content. It basically tells you where something is, how the tables are sorted out, how the paragraphs are divided, the headings, all of those, all, all of those things. It's, it's like when the web started, website, website no, web 1.0 was just HTML, where everything was black and white, but it worked. Uh, one, one way of looking how HTML looks like, if you go into maybe Wikipedia, Wikipedia is heavy on the HTML side. It does have everything else, but it's not designed for looks. It's designed for you to get in and get the information. Right? And then CSS is about how, how things look. So if you go into any websites, like if you, if you go to Facebook or whatever. If you see colors, that's CSS. If you see uh, things being shaped nicely, or everything, if it looks nice, it's CSS. It, it's, it's mainly designed for that. And then the last thing, JavaScript. JavaScript handles all the logic for the website. <coughs> logic in the sense of, you have a website, maybe you're filling in the form, and then you click a button. Now what happens after you click that button is all JavaScript. JavaScript turns the logic of saying, okay, this person filled in this information, grab this information, throw it somewhere else, or do something with it. So for now, I'm just gonna give you just a basic overview of how an HTML, an HTML file looks. Because when you're web scraping, it's all about targeting a specific uh, item, a specific tag, an HTML tag on a website then retrieving information from it. So you can either target the HTML or you can target the, what is called a CSS identifier. But I'm gonna show you everything just now. Okay, so I try, this is me trying to run HTML on a notebook. 
but it, it does work to some to some extent. So now what you what you find with most websites, right at the top, there's an HTML declaration saying whatever what I'm about to write, this this everything that comes sorry, everything that comes up at Doctor is just HTML. And then how you recognize HTML or the HTML tags are the less what's it? Less than great, greater than signs. So yeah. So that's the easiest way of, of seeing whether something falls under HTML or not. Right. So you have the HTML declaration, and then you say, and then you, you, you specify, okay, this is all HTML now. From that, this is the first HTML tag that says everything underneath, underneath this is an HTML. You have the head section. Now the head section is all the stuff, it's all the metadata. Basically, what that means is the user doesn't see most of what you put on, onto the head, se head section, except for the, pick, the title. So now what the title is, if you're, going, if you're using a web browser and you browse to any website, the thing that get, gets written here on the tab, that's the title. But everything else gets hidden. As in, if they're using some sort of uh, JavaScript package or CSS package, or you find most of the information in, in, in the head somewhere, but the user will not get to see it. What the user gets to see is all the things that are under the, the body section. So once you go body, and then everything you write after it, between the body tags, the user will see. And that's the stuff that when we're scraping, that's mostly what we go after. Right. So now if I try and run this, it only shows this part. Okay, it only shows for this part, from heading one, heading two, and this is a paragraph. It doesn't return page tag, page tag or anything, anything that has to do with the, with the head section. But the, but the title will really get written on, 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 the, on the tab themselves. Okay, so now let's go into... Now the problem with Jupyter Notebook, it wasn't designed for web development, so it's not easy to, to show HTML files and all those things. Okay, this is just a small page that I designed just to show as a, as a sample for what we're doing today. So now if you want to see how the web page is structured, one of the easiest ways is to open open whatever web page, right click on your browser and go to inspect element. So it's like this for all the major browsers, I think. Yeah, I know with Firefox and Chrome, you just go, not snapshot, you just go inspect element and on the side it shows you everything, like how the web page is structured. Um, it shows you all the things that are in the head, but I'm showing. Uh, sorry guys, at the back, Dustin, can you see? I'm looking for it. Okay, okay. And then another thing is from the HTML, CSS, how you how you spot CSS on a web page uh, when you're reading the web page on the back end is everything has style, style text. So everything in between these two things would be CSS. All your JavaScript, everything between these two. Is all, is, is all JavaScript, right? So now let's go to some web page. Let's try this one. Two main ways of viewing everything. First thing, you can go right click, view page source. No, not that. View page source basically removes all removes all the, all, all the fluff from the web page and it returns just the HTML. So you see, you see the, the, the bare bones skeleton of how everything is structured in, in the back end. And when you're web scraping, you're, you're scraping hot or script or whatever, then it's going to be looking at this. It's not going to be looking at all the fancy pictures. <laughs> you know, you actually see the actual links to the pictures themselves. Okay, now to continue from that, and then since everything, since HTML holds everything, how you identify the CSS inside HTML? You see also there's also uh, things called uh, CSS, CSS tags. 
And CSS, CSS, CSS is a basically divided into two. You have your IDs, you have your classes. IDs are like unique things, as in there can only be one of those things somewhere in the web page. And then classes, just groups of things. Maybe groups of images, groups of paragraphs, groups of whatever. But if there's a, maybe a password section or anything like that in the, in the web page, there might be only one, or there's normally just one of, of an ID that has a name or password inside your web page. Right, now enough of our web development, let's do what everyone came here for. Um, web scraping in Python. There's, I think, about 10, okay, more than 10 packages you can use to web scrape websites using Python. But the most popular ones are Beautiful Soup, you have Scrapey, and you have Selenium. And for the purpose of this talk, I'm just going to be using Selenium because I found that it's, it's pretty ideal for most situations. And with Selenium, um, I stand to be corrected, but I think it does come with Anaconda. But if, <laughs> but if you don't have it on your system, you can basically do a pip install or you go to the Anaconda page, which is this link, just use that uh, command line to, to install it into your system. Right. And then when you run it, you open up a script. Um, two things are important, okay, for me, anyways, when, when I'm running anything. You need to import the web driver from Selenium and you also need to import the keys. Now, the, the web driver is the actual thing that opens up the browser and starts searching for things. And then the keys are like your keyboard. Is in, if you want to use Selenium to type anything out, you're going to be using the, the keys module inside it to do all of those things. And then I'm also, oh yeah, another thing guys, if you have any questions as I'm talking, just raise up your hand or just ask. I'm trying to go fast so that I don't keep you here for too long. Okay, so we imported Selenium web driver and the keys. Um, most important thing, if you don't remember anything else I've said today, I'm going to say today, remember this. When you're using Selenium, you have to instantiate the web driver. So it's basically, you give it a variable name, you go web driver, I'm using Firefox. You can use it with either Firefox, you can use it with Chrome, you can use it with, can you use it with Internet Explorer? Don't try, okay, just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, just use Firefox. And when, when you're running it, you have to go web driver dot uh, browser name, and then you have to have the, the path for what's called your Gecko driver inside your system, right? What the Gecko driver is, now that you have Selenium, you're not done. You need to go get the driver from Selenium, and you get the driver from this link. It's an actual file, it's an actual executable file. So you take that file, there is only documentation where they, where, where they give the path, where they like you to put it, where it's, where it's industry, industry, uh, industry standard for you to put it. But I don't put it there, I put it wherever. And then what I do is, where is this thing now? Okay, let's do it. I don't even know where I put this one. Okay, I'll check here. Okay, so what I do is, wherever the file is, just hold shift, right click, and you copy the path of the executable file. So that path has to come in, it has to come in here as a keyword argument. You have to, have to, have to say executable path, executable underscore path is equal to the path of the driver. So then Selenium knows exactly where, 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 where it's located. So, because if you don't do this, you might have issues. If, that's if your path is not on the environment path, path like that. Uh, is there a driver for each specific uh, web browser? So like for Firefox or for Google Chrome? Or is there any ones that are more efficient for either? I think, I think in the beginning, it was split. But I think the Gecko driver now does work for both, but you just have to, you just have to check. Um, I just said I just prefer to use Firefox, and I looked it up and I found that it works fine for Firefox, so I just use that one. Um, um, I think the last time the same one wrote in Chrome. Because remember I used Chrome last time. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the same one for Firefox and Chrome. Yeah, we just changed the 
argument from Firefox to Chrome. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to write it like this, not not the, not Firefox as in to have the F, both Fs, two capital letters, doesn't work. Only the first one has to be a capital letter. Um, okay, let's do some scraping. Once, once you, this is the biggest help that you're going to come across, just getting it to work. Right. So once have I run this, okay, I run that, and then once I go web driver, I have a, I, so now what I'm doing is I'm basically launching another instance of Firefox, but this instance is a hypnotized instance, and then it shows you once you see this, you know, okay, you now have control of your browser using Selenium. Can you guys see if I split the screen like this? <laughs> okay, once this is up, it's now basically, because you created an instance of this, as in you made it available, you can now go uh, driver.get and put in whatever URL that you want, then you are, and then now you're in. And now, let's say for this website, um, this is example.com, I have no clue who owns it, but <laughs> Uh, but a lot of people use it to give examples of how websites are structured. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to be using now. So if you just go into it, it's a basic website, it just has a container with the, the header, paragraph, and the link. So now, if I want, let's say I wanted to get this part, just the header, I wanted to get the, the information of what of, that's inside of it. With Selenium, I can do this. You can type things as individuals, or you can type as individual elements, or you can type them as groups. On the, on the documentation for Selenium, this first part is all about targeting something as one by one. This second part, it's all about targeting things as groups. So now, let us enlarge this. Let's say I wanted this. Instead of running around just checking what it is exactly, put your pointer close to it, right click, inspect element. Move this to the side. So that shows that this element that I'm looking for actually has a tag of H1. And H1 is, is, an, is an HTML tag. Because if you look at the line here, it has those uh, less than greater than signs. That's, <laughs> that's the easiest way of seeing, okay, this is an HTML tag. So you can actually target. So you can get this information just by targeting the HTML tag, which I have to call it as, 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 as tag name. So if I want that, I go my driver, find element by tag name, and the, the name of the tag in this instance is H1. So I run this, it then it just stores that variable. But if I want to see what the tag, what the information is inside the tag, I just go to whatever variable I gave it, dot text. You have to put in the dot text for you to get the thing that you're looking for. Otherwise, it's just going to return you a Selenium object. So, yeah, that was simple one. Sorry. Yeah. So, mine is returning the object, so not have looked yeah. In that sense, I'll have to go remove this. There we go. Stop Selenium Java, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's, it's, it's the Selenium object, but I'm not interested in everything that's inside the object. I just want the text. So you get it like that. So yeah, that was example one. Now example two. What if you want to want information where the website that you that you're going to be using has a some sort of form inside of it? So now we're going to be running a, a Google search. So just go web driver. I'm now changing the the URL. Now I'm heading over to Google. Yes? Can you open multiple tabs using Selenium? Good. Multiple tabs and scrape all of them at the same time. I think, yeah, there is a way. There is a way. But, yeah, it gets, it gets interesting. Because now the thing is, you have to keep tabs on the actual instances of all the web browsers or all the tabs inside your web browsers. But, okay, I've never done it. I just prefer just having one instance and just having it run overnight or something like that. Okay, not overnight. But having it run for the, um, how, many, how many pages that I want from the website. Um, what are we doing here? Okay, we're on Google. And with this, like, 
the process of going to whatever that you want, let's say, because I wanted to put information, wanted to do a group search. I have to now come in. Okay, no thanks. I don't even know what that was. I have to now come in into this, right click, inspect element, because I need to know what the search box is called. Right. To find that out, there's this whole information about the search box. But if you look at it, okay, the HTML tag itself is called inputs. Then there's the class, there's the next line, but there's also a name here. So in web development, you can also just give give your give certain fields certain names. So with this one, the, the name is makes it unique or makes it a bit easier to to search. So now I come back. I use the the, the, the driver method called find element by name, and I put in the name. Run this. You won't see anything happening. When, if nothing happens, you're good. It means it's work, it works. <laughs> yeah. Because let's say I remove Q and I put in whatever and I run this, uh, Python will tell you I cannot find whatever that you told me to go find. So we turn this back to Q. If nothing happens, okay, it's fine. Found something. And then in the search box, because now I want to put some text inside the search box. So I say, search box dot send keys. When you're sending keys, it's basically saying type whatever string that I'm going to give you onto whatever field. So I type this, so now if you look at it, it's just, it's already just typed uh, Explore Academy. And then from that, and then search box submit. Now with submit, normally this is what happens. If the form that you're filling in has one, just one, um, I was saying one field, submit normally works. If, but if you have multiple, uh, multiple fields with some websites, because you know some websites you can fill in the form and just press enter and then it submits everything. With some websites you fill in the form and press enter it just looks at you. Because of how it's designed in the back end. So in that instance you have to go find the button for submit and then click it. And we are going to be doing that on the next exam. <laughs> yeah, with this one, you need to the form here to log in. You need the username and password and then you have to actually physically click the button. With that, so you go first, find the username. Same story. This, when you're web scraping, this is your life. You go to the actual thing and you go look, what is it called? If you see, okay, it's an HTML tag called input, but it has an ID of username. Okay, sweet. So now we are gonna look for it, we're using that. So you go element by ID, and the ID name is username. Run that. Um, and for this case, I'm just going to be using my own details. And then the fields and keys, my email address, find the password using the same system. But in this case, the ID, the ID is password. Send keys again, my super secret password, um, <laughs> which everyone can see at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so, but with this, if you go just if you just go um, don't submit, it just looks at you. So you have to go find the actual button and see what name, it, what ID, or what class, or whatever, who what, what was it given. In this instance, um, the ID was given, a given, oh, it, because it's the only button on the screen. So the tag name, the external tag name button is actually there. Okay, so we do this, let me just do this, expect element. If you inspect the elements, yeah, there it is. HTML tag of a button. So whatever button on, there is on the screen, click that button. Since it's the only one, it's fine. So yeah, we do this and it should log in. Oh yeah, you have to select the button and then click it. That's okay, so if the button had an ID, you could just reference that. Yeah, you could reference that, yeah. There's multiple ways. You can reference one item, maybe six different ways, I think. That's a bit. That's, that's a work from like server to server. Let's say you were, because you're running a notebook locally, right? Right, yeah. So does it work from server to server? Like, let's say, for instance, I'm running an AWS instance and I wanted to send an email to myself to my Slack. So it's from server to another server. Yeah, it does. There is, uh, but the methods differ when you're doing it, when you're doing it then. You might have to run what's called a headless instance where it actually does it in an open browser. So, okay, it does, but it opens it in, inside the terminal. So it moves everything inside there. But yeah, it's possible. 
Or you can just use Python to send the email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so, okay, this was just an example of how hard to fill in a form and search for a specific button on the screen. Or it's not just a button that you can target, like any link. Just search for a specific link and you can actually just say link.click and then it does, it does the magic. Um, okay, I'm going to skip this for now because this, this line is about closing the web browser once you've done with everything. So now, this is our last example, guys. So let's go <laughs> shopping. Tell our folks, we're going to, we're now going to takealot.com. Inside takealot.com, search for the ID of the search field, which in this instance is just called search. Run, if I run it, nothing happens, which means good, uh, it found it. And then we are going to search, send the keys. I want to search for the price for a Dell XPS 15. All right, and then with this one, I can't run submit, so I just give it whatever search that I wanted to give it, and then click submit. Yeah, submit, and then it returns all the prices. So, if you're looking for an XPS 15 and you have 33,000, <laughs> <laughs> which is not that bad if you look at the second one at 53,000, uh, like, well, 53, yeah. So your modes can run properly. <laughs> um, but now here's the thing. Let's say I wanted to keep tabs on, on all the prices of the XPS 15 inside techworld.com. So what I can do now is, now the problem is, every, every example that I showed you, I've been looking for just one thing. But right now I'm looking for the description of the item, the price of the item, the reviews of the item, the specifications of the item. Like for instance, what, most websites which you go into to find information, you're not normally looking for just one thing. It's a group of items. Um, so with the same story, right click, inspect element. But now what you do is you don't just go for one instance. Yeah, for instance, if you don't just, just, just don't go for one thing. Yeah, for instance, here, uh, let's say I'm not only looking at the price, I also need to see the specs. So I'm basically looking for this entire block. Two methods. One method is on the side here, just from where the, the thing, is, the, the line is, you just keep scrolling up until the entire block is highlighted. So is it? Yeah, there it is. So the thing that I'm going to grab is this entire block, which has which has something called div dot p dash data or something something something. Whatever they see this the part that talks about the div dot, uh, dot p, that's the CSS selector. That's what gets shown. So when I'm searching for this, I'm just gonna go find the element by CSS selector and put in all this information. I need to comment. Uh, take notes of the indentation as well, because that also shows you um, what's the parent element and what's the child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, the, the first way. The second way of doing all of this, okay, not a second way, another way of doing it. Instead of moving your, your cursor on the side and just seeing what get, what's getting selected, you can actually click on this icon, this icon here. Um, I don't know what it's called, but this thing with the arrow with the pointer on it. <laughs> just click on that, and then now uh, when you move your pointer, it highlights all the things that you can grab. So now, once I have all the, the entire block that I want to grab, okay, now I know the name, div.p slash whatever, whatever. So now I'm going to go back onto my script, or in this case, onto my notebook, and then just say find element by CSS, CSS selector, and you write it exactly as how it was written, as in div.p dash data.left. Run this. Uh, and then I say return all the text. So now with the first one, is it yeah. So now here it shows you all the information that's inside that block. <coughs> but you need to be careful with the blocks that you choose, because sometimes the blocks can get big. If you're not careful, the entire website is a block. So it return everything that's inside of it. So it just depends on what, how, how high you want to go. Yeah, but then now here's the thing, I don't want just the price for the first one. What if you want the prices for everything, right? So now with this, how you work is you work in pages. So now if you want 
the, the prices for let's say for this for this instance, I want the price for basically all these laptops on the first page. Then I just go find element find elements by CSS selector. So what it does then is everything that it finds, it puts everything onto a list. And these two methods actually look the same, like so Selenium is built on it. If you go find element by whatever, whatever, it returns one thing. If you go find elements by whatever, whatever, it returns a list of all those elements. So now I just go find elements music by CSS selector. And then, yeah, no errors, so it worked. And then because it, it's a list, for me to print out what it found, I just have to run everything through a for loop. So I just say, for i in according all data, print i dot text. Because if I just say print i, it's only going to return the objects. So I don't want the objects, I want the actual text. So I run this, and there's all the laptops. But this is all the laptops only on the first page. What if there's 50 pages? And I want all of those prices as well. So now with that, what you do is we have to save information as you're going to be as you're going to be moving uh, throughout the pages. This uh, PD is not. I have it imported. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me just do this now because if I don't forget, insert above. Import, first you have to import this. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just call it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, there's every results now. I just pick it up, I pick. Okay, so then I'm just going to get things in a list. But now to fill it up onto a data frame, I'm just going to basically look through the list and then insert all those values row by row in, inside pandas. For that, easiest way, just go df, uh, df.append um, results. Inside your folder, sorry, inside your folder, yeah. Append each item on its own row. So now if I run this, wait for it to finish, and then check the shape, there's now 20 rows inside the data frame. So now each thing on, on, in, in its own line. Run df.head, so there you have it. First, first uh, laptop, second laptop, all the way down to the last one. But now, here's the problem. The results that we want to get are not just for the first page. If I maximize this, you can see there's more than three pages here. So now how to work around that is, because Selenium is designed to act as if it's you who are, who's actually doing this thing. So now you have to go in and find out, to go to the next page, which link or which button do you have to click. And in this instance, it's this little thing here, the creator design. Yeah, the great thing is that. So, yeah, inspect the element. Try and find out what it's called. In this case, it's just a dot page dash next. And with this, I'm just going to use a CSS selector. Okay, so. Now, okay, now here's what, what's happening. Currently, our notebook has a data frame with only 20, item, 20 items inside of it. But once we, where is it, where is it, okay, over here, yeah. But once I go find element by sensor selector and I select the button to turn the page and I actually click on it, the browser itself is now gonna move to a new page. But right? all the data from the first page inside the browser is gone, but we have it saved inside a data frame. Right. And then you basically do, do the same thing. Uh, we select uh, all these all the notebook 4.5. I will see <laughs> sorry <laughs> I wasn't classified correctly. Yeah, that would be your outline of data set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So same story, select all your all your blocks. Uh, on the for loop, and then you append to the same data frame. So now, when you do that, when you run this, when you check the shape, the shape should have changed because you should have gotten more information. So there's now 40 elements in the data frame. Right. But uh, this is the manual way of doing it. Ideally, you just need to create a script and a function that looks at the page, saves everything to a data, to a data frame, then goes to, to the next page. Right. Once everything is done, 
you go to the famous land that we all have to get into. So just take everything, export it to a CSV, and yeah, you're pretty much done. And guys, I think this, yeah, when you're done, just drive at the close, and, and you have all the prices for your experiences, and it's that thing for today. <laughs>
So not just having it working overnight, just having maybe work for periods of like 10, 15 minutes and then go back to sleep. So you say you do it to sleep, you do it to sleep without yeah. care? Uh, in other words, just, just if, if a website has an API, like with Twitter, yeah, just that's use fine. the API. Yeah. But the problem with the Twitter API is pay. Yeah, it's pay. Yeah. Okay, guys, so yeah, I'm ending the stream. Get time, I'll answer your questions later on. Yeah.